Hey guys, it's Simon Hurley from Eclipse and welcome to another video. Now I have to be honest, I stay pretty clear of sprays. They kind of get a little bit messy and they're not my thing totally. However, I saw these Dina Wakely gloss sprays at Creativation and was kind of really excited about them to have paint in a bottle. I think it's even a little bit more contained than doing things like paint pouring and stuff like that. And the opportunities with having a glossy spray is really cool with some of the techniques you can do. So I have to say I'm not an expert in any of this, but I had tons of fun playing around with the sprays. I learned a lot as I went, which I'll kind of inform you guys more in today's video. So you can kind of decide if this is something for you. I think they're a super cool product and they create some awesome backgrounds in the end. So yeah, enjoy the video. All right, so the first thing with these sprays is that they do have a little bit of a white substance at the bottom of them, and they all have mixing balls, so be sure to give them a good shake before you start using them to make sure that it's gonna be glossy and acrylic as well. So I wanted to make that note. For this first technique, I'm going to be using the white glossy spray, and I'm just going to use this to kind of create a resist technique. So I'm taking my Stargazer stencil and some stark white cardstock, which I'll be using throughout the whole video, and I'm just going to spray right through my stencil to create this cool resist. So that's going to give me white stars. I'll set that off to the side to dry. And then I'm going to kind of do the resist pattern by taking this and flipping it over onto my cardstock to get, you know, the opposite, a white background with no paint where the stars are. Now, one thing that I learned when I was doing this is you want to remove it quicker than I did here. It ripped the cardstock up a little bit, not too bad, but whatever the gloss spray is sitting on with your stencil is going to literally bond your stencil to it. So if I left that longer, it would have dried together. So you want to make sure if you're doing a technique where you're kind of putting two pieces together to do it really quickly. And then you just want to clean off your stencils and things like that quickly if you care about them because this is going to dry permanent on them. So cleaning is going to be kind of important as you go throughout your process. And I'm just going to spray a little bit of water onto it to kind of help remove that um, paint off of there. So once I have done that and cleaned everything off, I'm going to go into spraying my backgrounds. So I let those dry in between so I can get a good resist technique here. And then I'm going to spray on some of the colors of my gloss spray. Now this acts very differently than an embossed resist technique would because instead of kind of resisting those stars like an ink would, this is going to sit on top of that color until you start blotting the color off. Now the color is going to take a little bit longer to dry on top of the glossy stars that you've already sprayed. So by going in with the paper towel, it's going to remove the color from those stars, but leave it into the background because it's sunk into the porous cardstock more than it has on top of the gloss spray layer. So that's kind of how you have to think about it. It's going to kind of sink into the cardstock quicker than it would sink into another layer of the spray since the spray is glossy itself. I hope that kind of makes sense there. So here is this first background that I created. I think it looks really cool, kind of like a galaxy scene there. And then I'm going to just take some of the excess and I wanted to kind of see what this would create. And it creates this kind of cool painterly like background. So you could of course use that in an art journal if you're a mixed media person stick a quick die cut onto it for a quick card or die cut out of it for a really cool background which i like the look of so once i've done that i'm then going to use the background where i did the white background with the stars having nothing there and again i'm just going on to spray some colors these sprays create like a cool kind of you'll see it it's like marbled kind of bubbly pattern especially when you layer them on top of each other which is super cool so i'm just going to spray all of this down and like I said, you can't really see the stars a ton until you start kind of lifting off some of that color, which will remove some of that area where it had that resist, and it'll leave it in the area where the stars are. So you can see the stars are darker than some of the background there. And this creates a really super cool marbled glossy background, which I totally love the look of. It almost reminds me of like melted crayons kind of. I don't know, it creates a super cool look on there. So here I'm going to bring in the space training stamp set and I'm going to just stamp down some of the images. I'm going to finish off that card that we just did. So I'm just stamping down the little rocket ship and I'll stamp down the moon and some sentiments as well. And then I added it all together and die cut my background into a heart. I kept the images uncolored because I wanted the star of the show to be really the background and I love how that turned out. So next, I'm going to do kind of another resist technique. That's what I think is super cool about these gloss sprays. But this time I'm using just some die cut shapes. And of course you could use chipboard as well or whatever you really like. Here I just die cut a heart out of my stark white cardstock. And then I'm going to go in and start with my sprays. 
So I'm doing a quick background with a pink, orange, and a yellow spray. And now you'll want to maybe use a little bit of repositionable adhesive on that heart so it doesn't move around when you're spraying. So it moved just a little bit there. But what's cool about this is then you could use that heart on another background. But then I'm going in after that background is completely dry and I'm going to spray down the dark blue. Now, one thing I learned when I was doing this is you shouldn't leave it as long as I did because it kind of went into that background that was already colorful and made it kind of dingy. It did create a cool resist and lifted a little bit off more of that pink and yellow background, but it didn't give me the full look exactly what I wanted. So this was kind of a lesson learned. I was now going to spray the darker color on first and then spray the lighter colors over top and hopefully that would do a better job. So that was kind of a little bit of a fail. It didn't create a super bad background. It just wasn't exactly what I was going for. So on my retry, I'm going to take the negative piece, so that background with the heart cut out of it, and stick that onto another piece of cardstock so I can spray through the heart to get the darker heart there. Hopefully that makes any sense. So I'm going in with my dark blue, a green, and a kind of aqua color. And then you're also able to use this background with the heart cut out of it as a whole nother card, which I'll show you in just a second, which I think is super cool. You're really able to use several pieces together to create some cool backgrounds. So I'm going to let this all dry. It's recommended to just let it dry. I did have to admit I went in with my heat tool a couple times. I didn't notice a huge problem, but you are kind of heating plastic. So be aware of that, that it's not too great to do that. But you want things to be nice and dry when you're doing resist techniques. So here I went really quickly in with the background. I sprayed some pink, orange, and yellow down. And then I'm going in quick and removing that color off of the heart. And then it created this really super cool resist. So with an ink spray, that would have just sunk in and created a nice brown. But here it really resisted the color and created a super cool background. So that's what I love about these. It doesn't sink and mix together. You're able to have layers that just really stand out and pop off the card. So here's how I used this window. I just traced it onto another card base. And then I'm going to use the I'm so proud of you sentiment from my encouraging word stamp set, which just has a bunch of big handwritten sentiments. And I love the look of this card. It's super simple. It was super easy to create, but it's really bold, colorful, and stunning. And I absolutely love it. Now for my next card here, I'm then going to use the white again to create some resist, but this time I'm not going through a stencil or anything. I just wanted to test kind of how the resist pattern worked. So I sprayed that down and then I'm going in with a heat tool again, sorry, <laughs> just to make sure it's nice and dry. And then I'm going in with my sprays again and just spraying over top of the background with several colors. You'll see the spray kind of bubbles up, especially over where the white pattern is. Now the white doesn't really show through because the spray is just going to sit on top of each other as it does. Now the thing you want to do to make sure that you're going to get your resist pattern to really show up is again go in with a paper towel after a couple of seconds and wipe off those areas where your resist is. So after I've sprayed down several colors, I'm going to go in and just start removing some of that color. And you'll notice I go over top of other areas too, but it really only removes the color over top of that white area since it hasn't fully dried in that section. So I think that's super cool. You can kind of get a more grungy look if you want to or really fully remove that color, but it doesn't create an embossing kind of resist. It creates a resist where you can remove the color if you want to or let it sit over top of it if you want to more a subtle emboss resist, which is super cool. So then I'm going to go in and create kind of a galaxy background, not doing any resists, but just really layering up the colors and testing the awesome kind of glossiness of these sprays to get a super cool textured background. So I'm going in and just spraying down the first layer. And when I'm spraying these down, if the spray is still wet, it's going to mix together and kind of merge together. But if the spray is dry, it's just going to layer on top of each other and kind of make these cool marbled effects like you're seeing with that teal there. It kind of just marbled on top of that blue, which is super cool. It's going to still dry on top of each other. It's just going to take a little bit longer and again, create some cool textures and marbled patterns which I absolutely love. So then I'm going in with that green spray, again, getting some cool texture in there. And then once that's all dry, I'm going to go in and just kind of dip it into my background or my glass media mat where there's some extra spray. And that's just going to give me some layered effects. And that's going to dry on super glossy, which I think is kind of cool. Now, I tried spraying the white spray on top. It doesn't look super great. It's kind of overpowering. So I went with my Distress Splatter Brush after picking it up on my glass media mat, and I'm just going to create some flicked-on stars like that. 
and I absolutely love how that effect turns out. Now you do want to be careful, don't get this anywhere near your eyes or on your clothing or anything like that. It'll be permanent on your clothing and it's really going to be harmful for your eyes. So be careful when you're doing techniques like this. So here's that finished background once I was done with it. I got just a still image of it and I absolutely love these kind of galaxy and marble backgrounds you can get with it. So play around with that because that is super fun. So that's it for the backgrounds, but I wanted to show my glass mat. This stuff does kind of, it's really permanent once it's dry, so it does kind of stick to that glass. So maybe a craft sheet would work a little bit better, but I found the best thing to clean this up was a scrubby, like a kind of harsh sponge. This one's a stamp scrubby from Ranger, and that really cleaned it off nicely with a little bit of water and rubbing alcohol, and this stamp scrubby really cleaned off that paint nice. All right, I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. As much as I loved creating it, it was super fun to just kind of sit down, relax, and create lots of different backgrounds. Of course, it is a little bit messy, so I like to create all my backgrounds at once, and I'll definitely be using the rest of those backgrounds on future cards as well. I could totally see why this is going to be awesome for art journaling and things like that too. There's tons of different techniques you can do, and it sticks to lots of different substrates too, which is really nice. Now leave me a comment down below letting me know which backgrounds or card was your favorite from today's video, and let me know if you'll be adding or looking to add Added these sprays to your collection. I think it's super cool that they were able to get kind of a paint in a sprayable form. That way it's more accessible than like spray paint and not as toxic to add to your project, which I think is super cool. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and ring the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you never miss another video like this one from me. All right guys, I'll see you very, very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.